Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Okay, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. Today's task is to hang wallpaper on a ceiling. Let me show you. So that's our ceiling. It's longer this way than it is this way, obviously. This is the product. It's, it's a cork with a matching pattern. As you can see, the medallions come every 25 inches on center. So, <clears throat> which way do you go? Well, that's a matter of preference. It's really a matter of preference. The ceiling from here to here is about 10 feet. From here to here, it's only about eight, eight and a half. And so, when you're hanging a ceiling, the easier way for the paper hanger is to go the shorter distance. That'll produce at least one more seam on this job. You might want to take into consideration things in the way on the floor. And primarily, what does the customer prefer? In this case, it's not a significant issue whether we go this way or this way. So here's how you would engineer this. You determine, first of all, if you're going to run the wall covering this way or this way. You find the exact center point of the, the wall, in this case, a ceiling. So in this case, obviously, the the fixture, electric fixture hole is going to be the center. It's not always the case, and I'll measure it to make sure, but we're assuming that's the center. Then you determine what is your full length. Let's say my full length is 200 inches. I then pencil mark where, where my center line is, and then if my wallpaper, if the number of wallpaper sheets that I need to cover from here to there is even, if it's an even number like four or six, then I'm going to start the first sheet edge right against the center line. That is the center line that shows the middle point from here to there. If the number of sheets to complete the job is even, then I start my first sheet on the line at the center. I could start it here or I could start it there as long as I'm beginning on the center line. But what if the number of sheets is odd, like three or five or seven? In such a case where the number of sheets to complete the project is odd, then I'm going to start my sheet where the center of the sheet is begun on the center point. Or you could accomplish the same thing by simply moving the first sheet halfway over. Okay, so if it's an even number, my sheet begins 
the edge right on the center line. But if it's an odd number of sheets, my sheet simulated by the space between my fingers here would start here. See that? Which means that the distance would be measured from the center halfway the distance of the sheet of wallpaper. So from, so from here to here would be half of my sheet. So from my center line that I would still use, whether it be even or odd numbers of sheets, I would simply take the width of the roll of wallpaper, let's say it's 20 inches, I simply move it over 10 so that the distance between the center line and the edge of my first sheet is 10 inches or half the width of the sheet of wall covering. Is that clear? Even number of sheets. My wallpaper starts from the center, moving over. Odd number of sheets. My wallpaper starts here. And that will give you <clears throat> symmetry on each side of the center. Any questions, please leave it below. So with the help of our scaffold and ladder, I engineered my ceiling and I want to share with you my results. So the total width of our space, in consideration of the fact that our wall covering will be applied this way, top to bottom, long sheets down this way. In consideration of that, we're measuring side to side. Make believe this is a wall. Same rules apply for ceilings. My total distance between left to right is 157 inches. So now I need to know how many drops of wall covering do I need? So I take the number 157 and divide it by the width of each sheet or simply the width of the roll of wall covering, which is 20.5, 20 and a half inches. And that will give you the number of drops or sheets. The number of drops I need is 7.6. And you remember from high school that you, you round that off to the highest whole number. And so we need eight sheets of wallpaper. Eight sheets will cover all the way in there, and there is a lot of space in there, and all the way to there. The ceiling does not end at the shadow. It goes beyond a full 12 inches into that space. So we wanna cover it all. And so now we need eight sheets. Now here's our rule. If you have an even number of sheets, you're going to start here right on the center line and hang in either direction, depending on your preference. If I had an odd number of sheets, well, we know what to do. We would measure from the center line outward, half the distance of one drop of wallpaper, which would give me the perfect center of the center of the paper and the center of the space at the same time. But we have even, so we're starting our wallpaper drop like this. Okay, let's get to it. To give myself a nice straight line here, I'm going to measure from the end inside there, all the way to the center, half of 157, since 157 is my total distance. 157 
divided by 2. And 157 divided by 2 will give me 78 and a half inches. And so I'll measure out from here, make a mark at 78 and a half, and come over here, 78 and a half, and run a laser and join those lines. And then that'll give me my, my perfectly straight line. Okay, I'm gonna share with you a problem that I encountered. That is my true midpoint right there. But when you come up here and you see what should be the center of the ceiling with this fixture hole, right? You can see that it's over. This center, this true center goes this way to meet that. So this is off center. So we have to yield to the circumstances that will dictate the beauty of our final product. If we go and we're stubborn with logic and say, well, that's the half point right there, they did not center this. This is not uncommon. This is, this is off by two inches. So we're going to yield to that imperfection and make this our center aesthetically. And what I did was, instead of going by measuring off of the wall, if you look close at the top of that crown molding, I put a pencil mark. So we're gonna go off of the crown. Since the crown is dominating the appearance of this ceiling, it all looks symmetrical, doesn't it? So we're going with that. And now our medallions will yield to this rectangle so that the opening, whether it's off or not, it will look perfect. And so to do that, we need a reference point based on what's dominating the ceiling. And since the crown is dominating, we're going to measure off of the crown. And so I'm going to find the center of the crown from there over to the next 45 and base my layout on what appears to be perfectly centered ceiling space. My new center point will be half from this point to this point. And therefore, it'll be at 62 inches because the total is 124. So I'm going to make my center point a mark on the crown. And then from there, I will make my center point. And I'm going to mark this one too here. And I'm going with it. But hold on one second. Some of you experts will challenge me, rightfully so, and say, Spencer, okay, that's 62 in the center there. But you know and I know that it doesn't mean that 62 will be the center here. And when I shut the video off, I said, well, they're right, let me explain. And so lo and behold, I went from there and I measured over 62, made a mark. And then I crossed my fingers and I measured here to the point at which I made my mark. And guess what I got? 62. I, I got 62 here and 62 here, which means it's 62 was the dead metal on this. So they did that right, okay? It's just that this is off center. So we're gonna go with it, okay? And let's get started. Okay, so let's discuss where we have come thus far. The reason you see me putting a laser line right here, you look, you see the pencil mark on the ceiling there? Well, I joined it to the other pencil mark on the other side of the ceiling, and I joined the lines with my laser. The laser then essentially becomes my pencil mark. I can now go up there and make pencil marks 
like you would see in a perforated line. Every 12 inches or so, I can make a pencil mark so that I can then draw a pencil line, retire my laser level, and then I can have the true edge of my first sheet. That's my center right there. And that's the way you wanna hang the wall covering. It's very important to achieve symmetry on a ceiling like this. I mean, it's the focal point of the room. If you have medallions and they're off on the left here, if you have a full medallion on your left and on the right you have half a medallion, you're not going to look like a pro. This planning, this engineering of the layout is the most important part of accent wallpaper hanging. Notice I say accent wallpaper hanging. It's not as important if you're doing an entire room, but when you're, doing, when you're only doing one wall, oh, it becomes the most important part of the job because you need to have symmetry. Okay, let's get to the rest of the video. Now let's transfer the information from up here down to the sheet of wallpaper. You see my medallions there? One, two, three. We want to make sure that our information on the ceiling is correct with the wall covering. So I wanna see how many medallions will fit in the space that I'm highlighting with my pencil there. I know it's going to be three medallions, so I want to have them centered properly. So if I take the number of inches from my crown to my crown, how many medallions can I fit in there? And how much space after the medallion to the crown do I have left? So if I get three medallions, three full medallions, that's great. Well, I measure the distance on the wall covering between the first tip of the first medallion to the last tip of the last medallion. And then I add the number of inches left to make it to the crown. This way I know that my wallpaper is centered. Okay? I'm not just putting it up there. Can you imagine starting in half of that first medallion right there that I'm pointing near, and then ending up with a full one right here? No, right? So here I am showing you where my wallpaper is going to begin and end on the ceiling. And that's something you wanna work out. Find a place in the house to lay the wallpaper out to take your inches from the ceiling, even on a wall. I have a video where I show you to do this for a wall so that you end up with the same flower that you have on the left as you do on the right. That's all we're doing here. That's where I'm going to end, right there. And boy, if you fast forward to the end of the video, you're gonna see how beautifully it came out.
Okay, well, there's the first sheet. And boy, I have to tell you, it's the most important sheet. You see right near the fixture circle, you see my, my pencil line right there. Well, that gives me a 90 degree angle with the crown molding. And as I turn the camera around, you're gonna see that I have the same amount of medallions on the left and on the right, you see? In the center, I have three medallions. And the same pattern that's showing itself right past that ceiling mark, right where you see the ceiling, you see right up against the crown, right there. It's the same as I have over there. And I might be beating a dead horse, but forgive me. I want you to realize how important it is. You know, you might be a great paper hanger, right? You're just starting out. You, you don't take into account this symmetry issue. And then you get somebody to say, oh, it looks great, but, you know, why did you center all the medallions? Why are they all off center? So don't let that happen to you. You see how the same pattern is on the left crown as it is on the right here? See that? Now the rest is like a piece of cake. Let me wipe down the wallpaper now and make it look beautiful. By the way, this cork is spongible. And what does spongible mean? Well, you can wipe it off with water, with a sponge, something that doesn't scratch the surface. So let me get to wiping it down and getting back to the video. Okay, so you always wanted to know, how do people hang wallpaper on ceilings, right? The trick is in the way you hold the wallpaper while you're up on your ladder or scaffold. Take a look at the way I have folded the wall covering. If you don't do it like this, it's gonna fall out of your hands and become a problem. I've overlapped the wall covering back and forth, back and forth, giving me 15 inches of usable wall covering as I'm up on the ladder. If you do any wider than that, it becomes cumbersome and, and the weight of it starts falling down off of the ceiling. So that's 15 inches there. I can take that under my hand and press it against the ceiling in the middle and then push to the left and to the right, and that 15 inches is up. Then I pull the rest of the wallpaper, and then I get my next 15 inches right under there. See that? And then I do the same. Press on the center, move your hand left and right, and then your next 15 inches is on the ceiling. But if you try to do it all at once, I promise you, you're going to look like Spencer Colgan when he tried to hang his first wallpaper on a ceiling. Here's a suggestion. Take a roll of the wall covering. Make sure that it's wrapped so you don't get paste on it. Put it underneath your wallpaper as you go up to the ceiling. See that? It's supporting it. It prevents it from collapsing. You ever see somebody make pizza pie? How the guy flips the pizza up in the air? When the pizza comes back down, what happens? It wraps around his hand, knuckles, and even falls onto his forearm. I, I lived in Brooklyn, New York for the first part of my life, and let me tell you something. I saw dozens of pizzas being made, and I always wondered if I was eating the hair on the guy's arm because the, wolf, the uh, pizza flapped onto his arm. Anyway, you don't want your wallpaper flapping onto your arm, right? And the way to prevent that is to simply put something hard under the wallpaper and you'll prevent your wallpaper from flapping onto your arm and collapsing while you're trying to hold it up. So, if you're a lefty, you'll do it like I'm doing it. You'll hold it up with your strong arm, get it into place with your weak hand, 
move it into place. This is very, very tedious work. Hanging wallpaper overhead. By the way, you see that nice natural light coming in from the window to the left of your screen? At By the end of the job, it was a rainstorm and it looked like it was midnight in the room. Anyway, make sure your electricity source is off so that you can hang your wall covering over the fixture without getting shocked like I did that night when I was hanging. Well, I tried to put up the lady chandelier and it was a funny story. The fellow, the owner of the house, I said, is the electricity off? He said, yeah. As I was holding the chandelier in my hand, it was glowing like a Christmas tree. And he was looking at me. He said, it's off. So I was like, oh, okay. And I said, can you just hit the switch off? And then I just, I got shocked. And uh, it was kind of embarrassing, you know. Anyway. I, I got shocked knowing that the electricity was on, but I uh, I thought I could just make the connections, you know. Anyway, so then, you see, I'm dealing with a short ceiling here. The distance between the crown behind me and the crown I'm facing is a short distance. But if you're dealing with a long ceiling, like 13 or more feet, you're gonna have a heavy load in your hand of folded wall covering. And so the procedure that I just showed you a little earlier in this video is so important that you flap the wallpaper over in approximately 15 inch increments in order to make your installation more manageable. And I'm telling you, I don't care if you've never hung wallpaper, if you and your friend or another person can help you do this, why can't you do it just as well as I did it here? You can. Don't poo-poo bubbles. You know, amateurs do great work, and then they kind of like say, ah, oh, they'll go away. The bubbles, ah, eh, that's just a little crooked. No, do it all perfectly the first instance, and you'll do wonderful. So this sheet and the sheet on the opposite side of the ceiling where I get near the crown were very difficult because the wall covering is more than 20 inches and the space between the installed sheet you're looking at and the one that I'm holding the edge of it, it exceeds the space after the crown molding. So I kind of lost it here. See, if I had a helper on the scaffold, the person could have held the wall covering above the crown, just below the ceiling as I, as I came along, you know? If it were a larger ceiling, I would have needed a helper. So I'm just doing this on the fly. But this is not ideal to do it like this. But you know, you make do, right? So that's what I'm doing there. The reason why I had to 
keep doing voiceovers through this video was because my customer had music playing, which was struck down as a copyright infringement, so I couldn't use the video in the manner in which I, dis I did desired. So I had to do voiceover and block out the music playing. Okay, so I'm trying to show you up close how it should look in your hands when you go up to that ceiling. You see that? Now, of course, I gave up the, the wallpaper underneath it, but it's a big help when you're dealing with a lot longer span. Okay? But you can see where if you don't have it, you might want to use your head. No pun intended. You see how I'm using my head there? Okay, and it's essential that you adjust your scaffold correctly. Here's a rule that I have. When you're setting up your scaffold, you see those holes on the yellow rail, the vertical rail on my scaffold? You, if you're working on a ceiling, you want your head to be three inches under the ceiling. And if you do that, you and depending on your height, you'll know with a tape measure how high your scaffold should be set. You know how many times I've set up my scaffold too high and I'm crouching my head because it's just an ordeal if you're working alone to lower the scaffold once it's fully assembled. It's an ordeal. And if and if it fails it can literally cause damage if you if the scaffold fa falls against something. So, take your tape measure, measure from the point at which you're working, your ceiling, all the way down to the floor, and then say, well, I want my head to be three inches below this distance, and then take your physical measurement, your height, and then determine how much space you'll need between your ceiling and the platform of the scaffold.